Good morning, free folk of the world. So we had some earnings yesterday, uh, Microsoft, and an excellent rebound. But first, uh, do me a favor and subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I'm up and running. And hit the like because it goes a long way for your hopes. And if you want to follow me trading during the day, uh, I, I tweet out my entries, give you plenty of head time if you're interested in taking some of these uh, entries. I show you uh, what to watch, when to enter, how to manage the trade, where to put your stops. So check me out at trading underscore off. And um, today I might back off a little bit because we're ahead of the Fed. Uh, but, um, well, check it out. You make a little bit of money with me. Um, there's a uh, option there to tip the host. You help out the channel. The channel is possible by the support of you viewers. And we have some um, very uh, gracious people out there who have contributed and make donations and participate. And I want to thank all you guys, like my friend, Mr. Williams, who I'm looking forward to chatting with once I uh, start screaming. And old man, Anthony, and we got Ben Dover. And I can't even think of all the guys who, uh, who, who, who um, communicate or participate with me in trading. And it's good because trading is a lonely business and uh, they keep me company. So anyway, let's get to it. Here is the news and really nothing going on. Futures are up aggressively. Kind of scary because I'm afraid people will come in and sell into that strength. Um, but, you know, this is what we got to watch for. If we don't see that happen today then um, I think we're on the move for um, a, a little bit of a retrace um, in what transpired. And then uh, we have to figure it out from there. A little bit of a retrace from this uh, rundown. Um, I don't know if we're going to uh, make the highs or break the highs, but um, we should get a retrace. And then I think we're going to go into a consolidation. So we'll take a look. And I can use it, Matt, because I took a beating this month on uh, my income trades. I did really well uh, uh, trading. I mean... Yeah, you know, I do, what I lost on the income trades was probably um, half of what I made um, um, day trading this uh, the, these past few weeks. Um, really incredible days. I mean, I don't want to talk numbers because um, yeah, everybody should have a clear head and not feel competitive with one another or, or try to um, make more money uh, than they actually have the capability of because that's where the loss is stuck setting in. So, um but I do trade uh, three units. A unit could be three contracts or 30 contracts. Um, and um, I, I, I kind of call out what we make for contracts. So, I mean, um, you could have days. I mean, if you're doing 30 contracts, you have days where you're making more money than most of the general population does in a year. That's the kind of month it's been. And I expect that to go on through uh, the winter. So anyway, really nothing uh, big in, in the news. Um, you got Microsoft. That's it. And then a um, bunch of recommendations and things like that. So uh, the only thing that's really going to affect the news today is the internet. Look, look, you, you have uh, all sorts of good stuff going on. But that's it, man. This is what everybody's watching. This is what they want to hear. Um, if, if he doesn't seem more aggressive um, then I think it should be same, same. And I think everybody kind of sold into this. I mean, that's what that, um, correction was. It was all based on, um, what was going to happen here. We're looking for a March, um, um, interest rate hike. People are calling for three, some are saying five, early tapering. I don't think he's going to be as aggressive as they say. I mean, you know, we're, we're getting hurt. Um, I mean, food is expensive and, um, Fuel is expensive, and it's interesting. And I'll tell you, when um, when I ran the firm, I really had everybody doing things for me. I, I, I didn't shop. I didn't look at bills. People paid bills, things like that. So, yeah, you know, I really had no concept of what the day-to-day -day life was. And then um, once I retired, um, yeah, you know, I'd go shop, shop for my kids or i cook for my kids or what have you. And um, I couldn't believe the prices, man. I mean, it wasn't a problem for me. But, yeah, you know, I have a general idea of what people make and how the world operates and things like that. I mean, how business operates and, uh, you know, even like what employees made and things who worked for me. And I just couldn't believe it when I saw 
um, get, you know, what the end of the week uh, shopping bill was, you, you know, and I know what I paid some people. And um, I had a, a, another uh, agriculture company at the time, which was kind of my retirement program. And I, I was hands on with that, literally, you know, doing the payroll. And um, I mean, the shopping was, was were paychecks that I was cutting people. And, you know, they have more kids than I do. I have two young adults. I mean, you know, I, it was just, it blows my mind, blew my mind then. And now forget about it. I can't imagine how people are making ends meet. Although salaries have increased, but, yet, you know, I know there's got to be some people out there hurting. And when the fuel goes up like this and they're spending an extra uh, 100 $120 a, a month on electricity, heating and gas, that's that's their party money. If they go out once a month, you, you know, to dinner, that that was it. Boom, there, you know, there it goes. That money's not being spent. So anyway, um, I digress. Um, yeah, I don't think they're going to be as aggressive with the interest rates. And if you ask me, the reason all of these major institutions, major financial companies are are hammering this um, excessive interest rate topic is to force the market down um, to buy cheap. So because there's not going to be a lot of movement in the market. And this is it. This is their opportunity. They're loading up, man. If you ask me, they're loading up um, when this shit is cheap and um, it's going to surge up then. And, and, and this retrace is going to make their their year or their quarter. And we'll probably see another retrace around March or so. So, all right, let's uh, let's just get to the picture because I haven't even looked at what was going on in the market today. So um, yesterday we had a pretty good um, um, buyback at the end of the day. And I was getting a little edgy and I took a little beating on some um, some income trades that I didn't have to. But it's risk management, man. And I'd rather um, have to make back um, lost profits than make back capital, you, you know, because, I mean, if I lose capital, then I'm trading smaller positions and it, the work just gets harder. So. I mean, it seems like this whole past two months was just risk management. It was just uh, atrocious as far as the investment investing world goes. So anyway, anywho, um, here, here, the, these red lines are gaps that I had put in some time ago. And uh, those were my targets. And, and I mean, we were up here when I put those gaps in. Um, and, uh, you, you know, we came to a near fill here. Then, you, you know, did all right, made a little bit of money. And then, boom, we wiped them out. And... Um, there are more gaps down here, but I don't think we're heading that down there. I think we're saving these for uh, the great debacle, for the next stupid thing that Biden does. Um, that's This is probably the Russian invasion, some mistakes that Biden will make in dealing with that. Um, so here's the hammer off off this low, which that, that was a pretty good low right there, that uh, 42.22. That actually, um, here's a head and shoulders, which caused the force down. Here's the break in the head and shoulders, right? So the distance from here to here is going to be equivalent to the distance from here to here. Um, and that's that's what we lost. Yeah, you know, that was the uh, the trade-off. So you could have targeted that bottom. So that's theoretical. And a lot of people look at that. And that could be the reason um, we stopped there. But it doesn't necessarily mean we made the bottom. Um but the, it could be the initial support because a lot of people are looking at that. A lot of people said, OK, this is where I'm covering and boom, 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 boom. They covered and created this. This bar here today is a rather indis well, yesterday's bar is a rather indecisive bar. I would have been a lot happier if we broke that high. Um, we could call this a flag. I mean, we have a bar up and here's a retrace. It's very aggressive. So um, I wouldn't really call it a, a, a good flag. And now we're popping through. And from what I understand the futures are up 64 points. I don't like that at all. Because if you ask me, we head up 64 points, we come down, we close the gap. So we're about 413. Um, yeah, we'll probably go up to this 38 mark and then come back down and close that, close that gap. Um, man, I don't like that. I'd rather we open flat and push up. I just don't. I mean, we could leave that gap behind, and that's my next target. So what I'm anticipating is if we don't close that gap right away, we'll probably come up, maybe come up to around the 55% retracement, 
the uh, 4521, and I'm not saying this is happening today, but um, this is what I'm anticipating. We come up around this area. I mean, we could go to the 61% retracement. I mean, we could even go to the 70, but it's more likely we hit around the 50, 55 area. And then um, we roll around and um, come back down to, to make another bottom. Um, and what we want to see is a higher low. If we see that higher low, then we know the next move, if we start pushing up, will be a break of that high and we'll make a higher high. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, although historically, the markets retraced very aggressively after these things. They've, they, they've made the fee, V bottom. But we're going to go in it with a bias and we'll watch right here. When we hit this area, we look for signs of topping, a topping pattern like the head and shoulders, a double top, you, you know, a rollover, all the fancy little things that, uh, that um, indicate that a trend is coming to an end. Um, so the, the fast and slow line on the Mac daddy isn't really rolling that much. Um, and I mean, the histogram has eased up a little bit, but it's not that aggressive. But again, yesterday was, it was a very indecisive day came off the bottom. Cool. Um, so this is the excess. This is the algorithms and the, the, the uh, aggressive trading. This is the general idea of what the market should have done. Um, it, it was really just a consolidating dip, but because algorithms and excess and greed and fear, you get these big wicks and these uh, big tails. So um, that's what we're looking at. Um, let's just jump over, take a quick look at the weekly and see what we see, just what it looks like, what it's mounting up to be. All right. So this is cool, man, because we have a fairly, let's make that bigger so we can see it. We have a fairly... I mean, you can't call it a hammer. It's obviously not a hammer, but we have a nice wick to the downside. And if we end the week up high, that's a really nice hammer. That's a good indication that we're going to keep moving up. And um, I'm happy because here's the 200 period moving average um, where we're, we're below the uh, Keltner channel. We get back inside the Keltner channel and we could probably call um, the target at um, 45, 48. Um, over the next week or two. <clears throat> Although that momentum hasn't rolled yet, but um, I mean, next week we'll probably pull the histogram in, the, 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 the um, fast and slow line or above the zero line. So um, we may do a, a quick zero touch and then a bounce off. And we'll have to watch it. Um, there's not much more we could talk about. 10 year, you know, the 10 years doing its thing. Um, I think the 10 years is going to come back up into the 18s, close that gap. And let's look, see what ES shows us. I like to look at the 240 because um, the week, go, the day goes as the 240 goes on the, um, on the futures and futures. Uh, you could use that 240 or it's a four hour, but um, you could use that 240 um, because they have such extended trading hours. Um, that 240 is a nice, consistent um, trade. I mean, I don't see a pattern there. I might be missing something. Let's go back to candles. A little easier to see. Um, I mean, if it came down and went back up, you could call it a cup of handles. Obviously, the trend is up. If it breaks here, it's going to move up. This just looks like a lot of congestion that it's got to fight its way through. Um, there's not a, a, a great trading pattern on this, but I'd have to say that, um, we're, we're fairly bullish. I mean, you, you know, you could see obviously that we're making uh, new lows, 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 lows. So I'm just going to say I'm bullish on this bad boy until, um, breaking that lower trend line. This, this line, I'm going to leave that there, but, um, this is actually. Yeah. I don't like this because it's just too steep. I mean, you could call that the pennant, but I'm kind of feeling that this is more. I mean, theoretically, I should be going from that high and that's how I was trained, but that just feels more right to me. Um, so I would probably have traded this pennant right here and um, watched this high right here of um, 487. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to watch that high of 487 today. And that looks like a good high because we've got that uh, 
that uh, 30 day moving average right around there. Or 30 period moving average. Really. Um, so that's that that looks like a good target. Um, 4470. What do we say? I'll even drop down to that. 4482. That, that would be my target for the day on the upside. Or at least that's where I'm going to take a look. And that number will translate it to uh, the S&P. They're trading within points of each other, the futures in the S&P right now. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's it, man. Um, we have a bullish day. Our, our bias is bullish. We're going to watch for the gap fill. That's a little uh, uncomfortable. But for the most part, I'm looking for bullish trades. Um, provided the uh, the daily is not giving me an overbought um, indication. And I'll probably not be too aggressive today. I mean, if I see a really sweet setup, then I can't, uh, I can't pass it up. But I probably won't be too aggressive because the Fed is uh, going to make their announcements. And um, we'll see, man. We'll see what the Fed has to say. So um, anyway, uh, remember, um, first, do me a favor. If you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate that. Hit the bell so you know when things are going on. Hit the like because Davey needs love. And um, if you want to see what I'm doing or trade along with me until I get the stream up um, again, um, I'm uh, tweeting my uh, trades at trading underscore off. And hey, um, lots of links there. If you want to support the channel, we appreciate it. Um, it's made possible by you guys uh, helping me out and uh, I can promote the channel. Actually, a lot of the funds that we've acquired through the channel have gone to promotion. You'll see um, that the subscriber list is uh, jumping and we're getting some recognition and we're getting lots of likes and love. Um, and once we start getting the trolls, then we know we're on our way. So anyway, um, have a most excellent day. Stay calm and cool. Be at peace when you trade and good luck trading.